as before, the Resistance was able to send a lone warrior, a protector for John. It was just a question of which one of them would reach him first. as follows. Houston, this is Discovery. We still have the alien spacecraft under observance. Houston, uh, this is Discovery. We still have the alien spacecraft uh, under observance. Uh, everybody else nobody else is this guy definitely saw it run all the way down the side of the airplane so it was a pretty interesting thing okay out there. So it was at 30,000 feet, 30, feet it was like long um, yeah it, it's right out of it's right out of uh, the x-files I mean it's a it's a definite UFO or something like that I, but I mean and, and, oh y'all are serious about this yeah he's real serious about it too and uh, he looked at it saw it no balloons are reported tonight, nothing in the and air. And it was strobing out the front, he said? Uh, I think the strobe was off the tail end of it. Okay, strobe tail end. He said it was kind of, well, it was dark, but uh -huh. uh, he said there was lights in it. How long did he think it was? He said he was 300 to 400 foot long. Holy smoke. Soldiers and responsible journalists jump on the UFO bandwagon. Well, in fact, more scientists do believe, then don't. Click on the insert to see the results of a survey conducted by one scientific magazine. You know, also at this debate earlier this week, there was a bit of a humorous moment when uh, Congressman Dennis Kucinich said that he had seen a UFO. But that's something that you're uh, intimately familiar with yourself. <laughs> well, a UFO is an unidentified, fied, unidentified flying object. And when I was uh, back as a peanut farmer, and the head of a uh, Lions Club in the southwest Georgia, I and about 25 others saw something in the air 
that changed colors and was round and came and left. We couldn't figure out what it was. It was unidentified <laughs> as far as we were concerned. Well, it's certainly proof, though, uh, Mr. President, that you can see a UFO and go on to become president of the United States. So maybe it's not <laughs> over for Congressman Kucinich yet. Jimmy Carter. Well, I, I wish him well. Uh, Jimmy Carter, <laughs> thanks very much for joining us today. It's good to see you. Good luck with your project there. Thank you, John. We're making good progress. All right. You know, they would skip and sail and, and give off these flashes. And uh, you take a saucer and you skip it across the water, and it, it's erratic. And this is how the name Flying Saucer was born. The target stayed on radar until about 12.30 a.m. They moved slowly at first, about 100 to 200 miles per hour. Then one of the targets sped away at a fantastic rate of speed. It moved west from Andrews toward Riverdale. The estimated speed was 7,300 miles per hour. At this time, in the tower, we had about seven targets on the radar scope. These unidentified objects were flying all over the city. That's funny, I was standing outside of a little uh, restaurant, I believe, a high school uh, lunchroom, and a a kind of a green light appeared in the western sky. This was right after the sundown. And uh, it got, got brighter and brighter. And then eventually it disappeared. It was not, didn't have any uh, solid substance to it. It was just a, a very peculiar looking light. None of us could uh, understand what it was. What if all of us in the world discovered that we were threatened by an outer a power from outer space, from another planet? Wouldn't we all of a sudden find that we didn't have any differences between us at all? It's arrogant, egocentric, egotistical for us to think that we are the highest intelligence in the universe. I think that's completely preposterous. The object came at a terrific speed from the horizon. We estimated 15 miles. Visibility would be poor 15 miles that night. Uh, the only plausible explanation that does it, that would explain all of these sightings is the theory that these could be intelligently controlled vehicles uh, controlled by an alien species, alien to this planet. Each passing year has seen our estimate of the probability of life in space increase, along with our capabilities of detecting it. More and more scientists feel that contact with other civilizations is no longer something beyond our dreams, but is a natural event in the history of mankind. This is about control. Still no explanation of the weird noises emanating from the The more we study the evidence that is being assembled all over the earth, the more inescapable the conclusion that man had best prepare himself for the greatest event in human history, the realization that we are about to contact, or to be contacted by, sentient beings from elsewhere in the universe. The late General Douglas MacArthur said that this confrontation would be the greatest challenge man ever had to face. Are we ready for it when and if it comes?